Well, happy family day, everybody. I got my drink, and I'm gonna head over to Tom's, and Dave is next door, his father-in-law. Today is a day that every year we celebrate, all the neighbors get together and we have a big bonfire and drinks and skidoo rides and sledding for the kids, and there's an ice rink over here, so let's go see what's going on for family day over at the neighbors. So we actually had a bit of a scare here earlier this week at the uh, local high school, both my girls go to, as well as Tom's kids, and they had a lockdown. And we couldn't get any information. The kids were all texting the parents, including my kids, saying the school is on lockdown. And then they could hear uh, police going into different classrooms and yelling, hands up, get down, get down. And police went in with full riot gear and everything. And up here, that is super rare. Um, you know, you hear about it all over the news, especially in America, because guns are a little easier to get a hold of, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Here, like I say, we can't, we're not allowed to carry handguns. Handguns are taboo here in Canada. But uh, it does happen. It's very rare, and uh, it's kind of scary for the kids, traumatizing. But, you know, I do feel... I didn't know what to think at first when I thought, you know, that they went in in full riot gear and then there was kids were posting videos, you know, of the, of the cops coming into each room and yelling and, you know, getting the kids to put their hands up and that. And then I remembered what happened down in Texas where the police refused to go in the school and the outcome there, where over the next hour the guy systematically, you know, shot all of the kids. Um, I can't be too upset with them bursting into the rooms here because they did what they had to do because they thought there was a gun and it turned out there was a gun but it wasn't a real gun um, so you know it just kind of makes me appreciate family day even a little bit more because for a couple hours the other night there we didn't know what was going on we were all just kind of waiting and uh, but the outcome was good it was it was not a false alarm but uh, just some kids being stupid kids so nothing came of it and it was all good Oh, you're going the wrong way! <laughs>
dog. <laughs> and he's still not tired. He's chasing the skidoo for an hour. He's still going. Cage, come on. Somebody's ready to go. Don't chase my squirrels. Another cold day out here. Sunny, but cold. Oh, forgot my mitts. We have a mission today. Oh, forgot my phone too. <laughs> ah, that would have that would have sucked. So today we're gonna do a little walkabout on the trail, and I'm testing the wireless Go mics again. I've had some problems with them disconnecting. To be honest with you guys, it's happened three times, and I didn't get these till Christmas. So, to even have three videos ruined is kind of annoying because when it's plugged in, you wire it into the camcorder, and if the wireless part stops working, then you get no sound from the camcorder. So you kind of you're kind of doomed. If it, if it disconnects through the via the Bluetooth or however it's connecting here, um, I think, I don't think it's, you're kind of screwed. Uh, today we got to do a few different things while we're out here on the trail. Uh, the first one is we are doing a security check. We're going to go to the far back swamp. We're going to walk the trail, do a perimeter check. Dave told me yesterday at family day that Lots of people have been coming off the snowshoe trails and onto our private trails and they're like coming out in his yard, you know, looking for the road and stuff. And that's not right. It's clearly marked. So I don't know. I'm going to go in and just make sure that the signs are still up there. And I actually uh, escorted two people off the trails last week, mother and daughter. Gage and I were walking the loop and they were lost. Well, all the signs should still be there saying private trail, so I don't know why you're even coming down here, but they did. So I took them out this way, which is, you know, the road is a lot closer here. The mom didn't look like she was in the greatest shape, and it's probably about a mile and a half walk back through the trail system to get out. So I took them through, but I did tell them, you know, that they are private trails. So hopefully we won't see those guys again, but yeah. It's the snowshoers, right? When they put that trail in back there, everybody just comes through. So we, uh, we, we're gonna do that first and foremost today is a perimeter check. Secondly, Tom bought a, um, a hot tent. He's got a little wood stove that he bought last year. And me, him and Ty are gonna do a bit of winter camping. So Tom was gonna set that up and try out this tent. But before we do that, he wanted to just have an evening where we get the tent hooked up and just see how hot the tent gets and what kind of setup we're gonna put in there so that things aren't, uh, you know, sleeping bags aren't getting burnt or anything like that if, if sparks come out of the stove, you know. Kind of a dry run before we actually sleep in the tent. So I was talking to my buddy Doug and he just sent me a quick one paragraph little text for an idea for a video he said you should check out uh, the headless man on Ponderosa Road I'm not familiar with that story so I tried to do some research yesterday and I believe Ponderosa Road is you know down it's south of here but within an hour you know one of these small little towns Trout Creek, Powassan somewhere it wasn't right here in North Bay and uh, I think there was an accident it involved a bridge and this guy was decapitated somehow. That's, I, he just told me, you know, I mean, bridge, Ponderosa Road, and the headless man. That's all I know. I couldn't find anything on it, but uh, he did mention to me that people do report seeing uh, this guy's ghost. So I thought, okay, you know what? That's, uh, we're gonna check that out. I'm gonna, I, I sent him another message yesterday after my failed attempt at research. And I said, send me more information. So stay tuned, because I'm trying to track that down, guys. That's an actual site we can go to. If I can get the history and the story, we'll cover it, and then we'll go do a live session there. A lot of you guys are asking about uh, updates on my dad, and there's really nothing to update. His house has been torn down. Um, they did not fill the hole in, because it's winter and everything's frozen. 
He's going to build a smaller house this time around. I mean, he's 70 and he lives alone, so it's not like, uh, you know, he has to redo everything like he did 45 years ago when he had a family. So uh, maybe, you know, 1,700, 1,800 square feet, single grade, uh, slab on grade, heated floors, so no more uh, wood. Uh, I'm going to minimize the electricity. We'll get him some splitless ducts in there for air conditioning and whatnot. So we've, we're going forward with plans and in the planning stage and all of that. Um, the insurance company seems to be okay. Uh, he hasn't had any snags so far. So I will update you guys on dad when there's more to update. But right now he's doing okay. He's still living with his buddy there and making plans for the new house and everything. So we will document that as things progress into the spring and summer. They're gonna be building for him this year. And I had a friend of mine who just sold his house and he was saying, you know, builders are saying that um, they can't get materials still uh, and new construction builds are booking right into 2024. And I said, well, I think it's different if your house burns down because dad is slated for a rebuild this summer. So if you're homeless <laughs> and you have nowhere to live, I think you get bumped up the list. So I keep telling my dad, there's all these little, you know, golden, you know, little nuggets of uh, good, you know, you got to find the good in there. And that's one of them, right? If he just decided to move and rebuild, he would have been waiting. But hey, you know, the universe had different plans. Your house burnt down and you get a new one this summer. So stay tuned if you're interested. And a lot of you guys, it surprises me how many of you are interested. Um, I was mentioning in the comments today on one of the videos, I've got to keep uh, dad and Stan around because these old farts, everybody likes them and their stories. So I'll keep them around for now. <laughs> and speaking of Stan, I keep hearing from him every two or three weeks. He's like, yeah, let's go out, let's do some trail walking. And then it gets a little bit cold again like today and I don't hear from him, right? Stan doesn't like the cold. So sooner or later, him and I will get out and hit the trails. Uh, we wanna find, there's a few places we wanna look for foundations. We do our spring crust walks. We go into the crane rookeries, back into the moose territory. We hit some of the old trails where there were 1800 homesteads, but you have to wait for the snow to go down because when there's two feet of snow, and there's not much of these foundations left, you don't see them. So we kind of have to wait till there's, you know, five inches or less and it's a nice hard crust and we can walk anywhere in the bush. That's when Stan and I do our pre-season scouting. So stay tuned for that as well. All right, guys, I guess that's it from Gary on Patrol. Thanks for joining me. Just a bit of an update, a bit of a test for the wireless system. And uh, maybe we'll be back in the woods this evening having a bit of a fire and help Tom set up the rest of that tent and figure out what's going on there. So stay tuned. Catch you guys in the next adventure.